Well, let me uh, begin introducing myself. My name is Umut Akyol. I am an otorhinolaryngologist, an ear, nose and throat surgeon based on Ankara, the capital of my country, Turkey. Since I'm a clinician and a pediatric ENT, I see a lot of kids, many, many. And from time to time, I see rare diseases too, including mucopolysaccharidosis. All MPS patients, and especially MPS2 patients, have lots of problems with ear, nose, and throat. I know all kids, especially who are going to you know, kindergarten or daycare, daycare, they all have frequent attacks of upper respiratory tract infections. We all know that, especially in the first years of the school or the kindergarten. But they are the ones who have very frequent attacks of otitis media. You know, they are the kids who come to us every second week. We have to prescribe them antibiotics. They are the ones who have some draining ears. We see them very frequently. And this is very early in their lifespan. They are the ones who have attacks of otitis media, upper respiratory tract infections, very frequently and very early. And of course, again, very early in their lifespan because of the enlarged tonsils and adenoids, they have obstruction. They are snorers. Sometimes they have apnea. We call it obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. And these are very prominent and begin very early in their lifespan. That's why MPS patients are seeing ENT doctors, especially ear, nose and throat specialists, very frequently and beginning very early in their lifespan. And in the early in their lifespan, they are not much different from the rest of the kids, but we have to see them very frequently. They are the ones who can go to surgery very early. So we put, you know, ventilation tubes for hearing loss, maybe one year of age, you know, six months of age. Then we have to sometimes do adenotonsillectomy in order to open the airway for snorers and very early in their lifespan. All these kids, even before coming to us to so your nose and throat specialist, they have hernia and they go to pediatric surgeons or pediatricians in order to be, you know, getting operated for hernia or being followed up with hernia. So even asking a very simple question, whether the kid has hernia, has hernia, or had surgery for hernia, this is quite important. If we know that this togetherness of hernia with upper respiratory infections, frequent ENT infections, this togetherness is very valuable because it can lead us to the diagnosis of these kids as, as early as possible. It's a very tough situation for a family. Before the diagnosis, because it's you know very troublesome, they take their kids every second week to a you know, ear, nose, and throat surgeon, then a pediatric surgeon, then pediatrician, maybe to orthopedic surgeon because of the different manifestations of the diseases. Yeah, there are some unfortunate cases who take a, quite a good long time before the diagnosis, and it's a bad case because the disease progresses. When we see you know little kids with problems, ear, nose, and throat problems, this is very common. All the little kids have problems with ear, nose, and throat disorders. But then when we become suspicious that there must be something wrong, maybe an immune deficiency syndrome or allergies or any other kind of disease underneath that. So uh, this is very important to send these kids to specialists for you know proper diagnosis when you are suspicious of something. I have you know a, some families uh, physicians, doctors, for example, who really uh, had quite a hard time and couldn't believe in that, or even though I'm sure uh, she must have thought that there must be something wrong uh, in terms of uh, having the kid having some, sorry about that, problems, but they couldn't really wanted to uh, admit that the kid had something wrong because it's a bad disease, it's a progressive disease. It's tough, so we must help them.